Howdy folks, welcome to this week's Ag Report. So this week, uh, it's officially the first day of, of uh, fall, even though it's 98 degrees outside. <laughs> I told y'all, uh, you know, it's, it's Texas, just a couple of degrees and we break the sweaters out. Um, but, you know, um, it has been a roller coaster of a year for hay production or lack of hay production or hay quality, all of the above, okay? We have had a, a epic drought uh, this year. It's not, not over with uh, yet. We have had a good rainfall event in some areas. It wasn't, it wasn't widespread. So uh, if, you're, if you're hearing this and going, well, I only got a quarter of an inch, I, I understand. Um, not all the fields got, got a good rain on it, but some of them did around the Ellis County area. Um, we've gotten kind of a, a little bit of a flush of grass. And so there's a lot of hay baling going on right now before the frost comes in. But I want to talk to you a little bit about hay quality. Um, I think this is very important in a year like this because you're going to have a lot of varying quality of hay because of the conditions that we've had um, that it's grown in. Uh, because of lack of hay, there has been... Um, filler hay baled like wheat straw, corn stalks that will be fed to, to cattle. So let's talk about that a little bit and, and I'll show you um, a, a tool that I use. Uh, it's, it's a little sampling tool or a boring tool. It hooks on the end of a cordless drill and it is a good way to get a fair sample out of a bale of hay, whether that's a square bale or a round bale. Now, uh, for this discussion, we're mainly going to be talking to, to cattle folks, and we're mainly going to be talking about round bales. But if you if you uh, have horses or, or other kind of livestock, um, this applies to you if you're feeding some low quality hay as well. But generally, um, this will this will be you know a topic for the the cattle producer. Um, so. As a cattle producer, you know that hay was extremely expensive starting off because of fertilizer. Then it got even more expensive uh, because of lack of hay. And you may uh, have had to buy some corn stalks, maize stalks, uh, wheat straw, uh, that kind of stuff, just as, as a filler. Okay, And that's the, that's the important thing. That's something that keeps that digestive system going in that animal but the protein is probably not four, maybe 5% uh, in those kind of uh, hay bales. So that's not enough to sustain that animal. You're going to need to supplemental feed. Remember, you want to keep this animal as in good a shape as possible because one, maybe they are lactating or making milk uh, for that baby. And if they're not getting protein coming in, they're not going to have good milk coming out and that baby's not going to grow as well either. Uh, maybe they, they are dry, but they're gestating. They are, they have a baby inside that is growing. They're trying to feed that as well. Again, that, that filler kind of hay, not going to be good, you know, nutrition either way. Maybe they're open. Maybe you've already pulled the calves off earlier in the year, but they need to breed back. Their reproductive system is going to be highly based on the feed that they get. They're going to need to have some quality, consistent feed to make that reproductive system work properly so that they can breed back and have you a calf next year. So how do you do that with corn stalks or wheat straw or something like that? Probably going to have to supplemental feed. Even if you have some grass hay, I would, would suggest uh, trying to get that sampled uh, so that you know exactly what you've got. Um, even grass hay can be low protein, low, low quality. Now, some of this stuff that's being bailed up in the fall is going to be a little better, I think, uh, in protein. Another reason why you might want to get it uh, tested. If it is better, then you can save a little money by not having to put out that extra uh, protein, whether that's in a tub or in a cake or cubes or, or what have you. So um, uh, look at the picture of the tool. Um, it is designed to kind of bore like a drill bit into the center of the bale through, taking little pieces as it goes so that you get a good, accurate uh, uh, picture of what is in that bale 
all the way through. Because if you just go out and grab it, you're just getting that outside layer. That's probably, you know, only 5% of the hay on the outside. You've got a whole lot inside there that you kind of need to see what it is. Um, the one that I've got is made where you can put a Ziploc bag around the bottom of it. So you, as you bore through there, you can kind of tip it up and, and that stuff will fall in the sack. If it doesn't fall back through, it also has a, a probe on it that you can kind of push it back uh, through there. I generally, you know, will make maybe two probes on a bale of hay, different, you know, spots, different directions, just to kind of get a good average and kind of mix it together. Um, if I'm doing a field of hay, I will probably do maybe three bales. I'll do one on one end, one on the lower end, because remember, our, our ground here is not all the same. And uh, in a field, you can have, you know, two or three types of soil in there. And uh, and that's going to make a difference on the quality of hay. You can, you can tell that by looking at a field. If you've got a field that's got a whole bunch of hay in one end stacked up and just a little bit on the other end, that's an example of that was the lighter end of the field. There's less hay there. That was the better end of the field. There's more hay there. Because uh, you remember when you're when you're baling hay, you don't have a choice of where it uh, gets full and comes out at. When it's ready, it kind of beeps and you dump it right there. So that's a good indication of soil contents, you know, in, in your field. But get your samples. Um Put it in a sack. You can label it what, however you, you want to. Um, I use a, a, a chemist out in West Texas. Uh, they have different things that you can pick when you're when you're looking uh, for TDN total uh, digestibility of it. You can look for nitrates. Uh, that's an important thing in a drought year. If you were baling corn shucks or something like that, making sure there's not too much nitrates in it. Um, you can look for parisic acid. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can kind of look through there. So just kind of hunt and peck, you know, what you want there. Um, send that off and they will kind of give you a, 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 a list of what it looks like, what your hay, you know, looks like in there so that you can know, hey, I need to, to feed a little bit here or know when I get to this particular field, I'm in good shape. And then that's how you can kind of plan. Um, you know, for, for, for me, I kind of like to uh, maybe feed my poor quality stuff first while the weather's not bad. It's just kind of, you know, mild, you know, weather. Um, that animal can, can eat that. Maybe there's some nibblings, uh, nibblings out in the field they can still, you know, do. I try and save my really good stuff, what I think is really good stuff, for those cold spells, uh, the bad weather, that kind of stuff. When those animals need some more uh, protein, they need some more, you know, energy to uh, keep them warm and keep them going through that. So just kind of think of that as you as you stack your hay, as you get it ready, you know, for winter. Um about what different kinds you might have, separating those off, uh, kind of making a plan of where to go. Don't forget when you stack that hay, I know it's been dry a long time, try and remember way back there where those wet spots are and try not to stack it where it's going to be wet or it'll it'll wick up water and kind of ruin that bottom layer of hay. Try and put it, put it on a terrace or something that drains away pretty good there. I hope this kind of helps get you kind of thinking for the, the winter time coming. I always uh, remember in agriculture, we try and, you know, think ahead as best that we can and we try and make a plan. Uh, doesn't always work. We have to adapt and be flexible, but that's the, uh, that's the unique thing about agriculture. We always try and uh, make the best of what we have. Y'all take care now.